Welcome to Inspiration and Transformation from the Banks of the Ganga with Sadvi Bhagwati Saraswati, an American sannyasi living at the Parmarth Nikitan Ashram in Rishikesh, India. Sadvi is president of the Divine Shakti Foundation, a charitable organization bringing education, vocational training, upliftment, and empowerment programs to women and children. Sadvi is also Secretary General of the Global Interfaith Wash Alliance and Director of the world famous International Yoga Festival. Join the musings of an American sannyasi as Sadvi shares the wisdom and teachings of her guru, His Holiness Pujya Swami Chidanand Saraswatiji. Welcome, everyone, to inspiration and transformation from the holy banks of the sacred Ganga River in the land of Rishikesh, India. So many of us, tragically, have this sanskara, this pattern of self-sabotaging. And this is true whether it's in our academic life, in our career, in our relationships, also on our spiritual path. And the reason, the reason that that happens is that our ego, our ego believes deeply that we are just the physical body, that we are whatever has happened to the physical body. And if we've been told in our life, especially Bajpanme, in our childhoods, if we've been told you're worthless, you're stupid, you're nothing, you're not good enough, you will never be anything, we believe it when we're young. We believe it even when we get older, but especially when we're young. And especially if we're told it by trusted people, our parents, our family members, teachers. And so sadly, a lot of times we have these sanskaras, these impressions, this subconscious mind that says, you are nothing. You are worthless. Now, someone may have said that to us verbally once, maybe verbally 10 times, maybe 10 years ago, maybe 30 years ago. But what happens is we keep saying it to ourselves over and over and over again. And we become the ones creating the harm. Kisine hamko harm kia. Kisine hamko galat bat bataya. Lekin uske bad ham swaim ko. Bard, 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 dubada ketirate. We keep telling it to ourselves over and over again. And then we self sabotage, meaning subconsciously, unconsciously, we prevent ourselves from succeeding. So, jase kaam me, bariya kaam kar rahe. We work really hard, we're doing really well. This project is going to be a great success. And then just, just before we complete it, just before the success happens, what do we do? We stop working. We oversleep. We miss the meeting. We miss the presentation. We give up doing the work and we just start getting drunk and watching TV and forgetting about it. Now, to a rational mind, it seems that makes no sense. Or we're in school, we're doing very well, studying, fair deck, final exam, Agya. And for the final exam, we don't study. 
even though we've worked so hard. But we blow off the final and then we fail. Maybe we finally have a beautiful relationship. Someone we love, someone who loves us. And then what do we do? Something really stupid, something really mean, something to push the other person away, to make them leave us. Yesari alagalag examples of self sabotage, what we do to ourselves. Because, remember, kisine hamko bajpan me ye sikaya, we are worthless. We are nothing. We will not become anything. So in order to make that come true, we harm ourselves. And that's what self-sabotage is. And the way to, to stop that, because so many of us are stuck in it, the way to stop that, is to look at it. Sabse pehle isko examine kare. Ki what belief am I holding? Which false belief am I holding? Or kaha se mila? Mene kisi si ka I am worthless. Kisi si ka me kuch bhi nahi hon. Kisi si ka I am stupid. Kisi si ka me kahi aage nahi badongi. Where did I learn all of this nonsense about myself? And then to look at who spoke it and when. Because when we realize that the people who told us those things, in most cases, we're very confused. Maybe it was our parents. Maybe they were doing the very best they could. But the bache, most of our parents, when we were born, apni parents ki umbra kya tha? Teis, chobis, pachis, chabis, right? Very young. Meri ma to chabis thi jab mene janam liya. Or usi samay, that was old. Most of her friends were bais, teis, when they had their children, 22, 23. Wato khud beche, khud confused hai. Could put up prayas, cut it hey, they're doing the best they can, but they're scared, they're confused, they're young. And so maybe they say things that aren't so helpful. Maybe they say things that aren't so true, that aren't so real, that end up harming us. So we have to look at who said it, when did they say it, did they really mean it? Kya ye such much such hai ki me worthless hoon? Kya ye such much such hai ki I am nothing? That I will never be anything? Of course not. Of course not. But that's where we need to really examine it, really look at it, really understand it. Why did I believe it? And now I know it's not true. And when I know it's not true, ki kisi ne mujko ese kaha, they can wakud confuse they. Could scared they could problem it. Could problem it. So then I realize what they told me is not true. No need to believe it. No need to ruin my life based on someone else's confusion, ego, ignorance, fear, challenge. And that's when we stop the self-sabotaging. When we realize, I don't need to keep telling myself this. This is not true. 
I am complete. I am divine. I am light. I am pure. I am whole. बहुत बढ़िया दोबारा बोलिएगा धीरे से ताकि सभी सुन लेंगे I am divine. I am divine. I am complete. I am complete. I am pure. I am pure. I am light. I am light. I am whole. I am whole. This is the mantra we all need in our lives. I am divine. I am pure. I am light. I am whole. I am complete. Whatever I've been told, it isn't true. So now I need to stop carrying someone else's false statement into today. They hurt me then, but I'm continuing to hurt myself now. And I need to take a pledge that I will stop doing that because I have been created by the divine and the divine doesn't make mistakes. If I am worthless and useless, it means God made a mistake. He left me kind of half baked. Got the recipe wrong. But God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't mess up the recipe. So we stop hurting ourselves in the name of that ignorance and really embodying and living the truth of who we are. You're listening to OTRFM, part of the IOM radio network. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single... Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Aliyah, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. Hi, this is Christina Ricci with Rain. Every two minutes, another American is sexually assaulted. If you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted, you are not alone. Help is just a call or click away through the National Sexual Assault Hotline. Please call 1-800-656-HOPE, that's H-O-P-E, or visit RAIN.org, that's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. Welcome back to Inspiration and Transformation. I'm so glad to have you all back here with me. Is it possible to have a personal relationship with Krishna? Absolutely. Absolutely it is. And in fact, that's another one of the really core elements of Hinduism or Sanatana Dharma that I love so much is that idea that you can have a personal relationship with God. Whether you worship Krishna, you worship Ram, you worship Hanumanji, you worship the mother goddess, that idea that you can have a personal relationship. Absolutely. In fact, Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita, in whatever form the devotee worships me, I appear to the devotee in that form. It's just up to us. It's up to us to develop that relationship. And that's also why, you know, even, even just one divine manifestation like Krishna, well, there's so many different forms. So there are some people who love to worship Krishna as the supreme Godhead, the absolute supreme reality. And then there's those who love to worship Krishna the way Radha worshipped Krishna. You know, in that, that way of just pure devotional, person-to-person love. And then there's people who love Krishna like 
a mother loves a child and who actually carry around with them. You'll see this a lot in India. People will carry around a small image of Krishna in a little basket and they'll feed Krishna and they worship Krishna as, as, a, as a child, like their child. And there's people who worship Krishna as their friend, like he was to Arjun. And, and again, what we're taught in the Bhagavad Gita, but also in so many other ways, however we want to connect with God, God is there. And it's such a beautiful experience because otherwise, no matter how many friends we have, no matter how big our social circle may be, there's an almost inherent loneliness. And we may be able to distract ourselves so it becomes a kind of low-grade loneliness that we're not always aware of. But the moment you become really quiet, you feel like, isn't there something else? And it's because until we are connected to God in whatever that means for you, there's no way that any of the other relationships can possibly fill you to that fullest capacity. Each of them can play beautiful, wonderful roles. But it's that relationship with God that ultimately ultimately fulfills every role. So yeah, abs- absolutely you can. And there's not a right way to do it. Allow it to happen. It's not something you can force. Just allow it to happen. You know, pray to Krishna for that experience of Krishna's presence in your life. And that doesn't mean it's going to be in the form of a blue-toned male being with a flute. Krishna could come to you in the form of the tree in your backyard. In the form of a human in your life with whom you are able to actually see Krishna through that being, in your love and devotion to that being, to experience the presence of Krishna. There's so many ways that we can experience the divine. So don't limit yourself to waiting for when am I going to have, have my moment with God who looks like this. Just keep yourself open, keep your heart open to the presence of God. It could be in the form of an animal who enters your life in some way, a person who enters your life in some way, a tree who enters your life, an ocean that enters your life. It could even be in a formless way because of course Krishna also is that formless supreme reality. So just allow yourself to be open to that that experience and just reach out your heart to God in every moment as much as you can. Beautiful. Or last, leave us up ke liye, apne hindi ke baare mein pucha. He asked how I speak Hindi. So I'll Give him an answer in Hindi for a moment. For those of you who don't speak Hindi, I'll give it to you in English. But may bechon se sika, koi pustak se nahi sika, na koi class se sika. Jab may America se aaye, pachis varsh poor, to shuru shuru may koi avashakta nahi thi. Sabi thorat sa angreji. बोलते हैं लेकिन जैसे मेरा को ये अनुभव हुआ कि यही मेरा गार्ड है मुझे यहां रहना है द 
देन आई रियलाइज कि मुझे सीखना चाहिए और उसी समय देर वॉज नो गूगल ऐसे नहीं था कि मैं ऑनलाइन जाओ ऑनलाइन हिंदी सीख लूँ बच्चों से सीखा बच्चों के साथ काफ़ी समय स्पेंड किया बोलते 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 उन लोगों से सीखा और लोगों के साथ बोलते 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 सीख गए मूल बात ये थी कि मेरे को शर्म नहीं आती थी संकोच नहीं होते थे जस्ट फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग आई स्टार्ट स्पीकिंग द खट क्या होते लोगों को फॉर एनी थिंग इज वी फील एम बेरस लोग हंसेंगे आई एम गोइंग टू मेक मिस्टेक्स क्या सोचेंगे मेरे बारे में और लोग हंसते थे खूब हंसते थे मुझे याद है हम लोग कैलाश मानसरोवर की यात्रा पे थे नाइनटीन में तो मैं नाइन्टी में आए तो पूजा स्वामी जी के साथ पूजा रमेश भाई ओझा जी पूजा स्वामी गुरु शरणन जी महाराज और सो मेनी सेंस और एक शाम को मैं पूजा बाईशी जी की टेंट में गए के साथ काफ़ी लोग बैठ रहे थे और समवन वज सिडिंग एट द टॉप ऑफ हिज बेड उनको थोड़ा सा जैसे एक्यू प्रेशर है उनको एक्यू प्रेशर दे रहे थे तो मुझे लगा शायद उनको सिर दर्द हो रहा है कुछ और मेरे पास खूब सारे दवाई थे आई हैड ब्रॉट सो मच मेडिसिन तो अमेरिका से हूँ आई एम लाइक अ वॉकिंग फार्मेसी सो मैंने उनसे पूछा क्या आपके पास दर्द है <laughs> तो वो मेरे को कहा हंसते हंसते कि हाँ मेरे ख्याल में कि शायद बिस्तर के नीचे थोड़ा सा है तुम देख लो इतना कंफ्यूजन हो गया मुझको कि व्हाट इज फाइनली समबड़ी एक्सप्लेन टू मी नहीं 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 आपके पास दर्द नहीं है क्या आपको दर्द हो रहा है बट आई हेड ट्रांसलेटेड इन माई माइंड डू यू हैव पेन क्या आपके पास दर्द है तो वो मेरा मजाक कर रहे थे आई थिंक मे बी अंडर द बेड यूल फाइंड अ लिटल बेड ढूंढ लो और सब भी हंस रहे थे मेरा कोई याद ही नहीं था कि मैंने क्या बोला लाइक दैट देर वर हंड्रेड्स ऑफ एग्जाम्पल्स But I just kept speaking because I realized, in order to really understand a culture, you have to speak the language. So, dere dere dere, abhi bhi bahut baaki hai, lekin dere 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 seek rahi hoon. All I can say in English is the only key to learning anything. is to just put your ego to the side if we're worried about making mistakes if we're worried about what people are going to say if we're worried about looking like a fool we'll never learn anything the only way to learn whether it's a language or anything else is to just put that ego aside and allow yourself to keep trying keep trying keep trying this is otrfm part of the iom radio network Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa K and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Like Baldwin with people for the ethical treatment of animals. I grew up loving circuses and other traveling animal shows, but it never occurred to me what life might be like for the animals. 
Training wild animals to do things they don't understand takes force. Routine discipline with a hook or whip with the heel of a boot shows the animal exactly who's the boss. Don't patronize animal acts. Please contact people for the ethical treatment of animals. 757-622-PETA Welcome back. This is Sadvi Bhagavati Saraswati with inspiration and transformation. As I was saying on the Ganga Ghat during Arti, when I first came to India in Rishikesh 25 years ago, I was so struck by how happy people were. I had been raised in a world where we were really told, here's what you need for happiness. You need this type of education, you need to get these grades, you need to have this type of a house in this area of town, you need to vacation at these resorts, you need to look this way in the right clothes, you need to get invited to the right parties. There was this whole happiness equation. And I came here And I looked around and Rishikesh was not nearly as developed 25 years ago as it is today. And I looked around at people living so far below the Western standards of poverty. People, it was so clear, we would say they are poor, they are poor. And yet, two things were true. First of all, In their mind, they were not poor. And so if you referred to them as being poor, they would very quickly correct you, nay, 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 hum garib nay, we are not poor. Wulog shayid garib hai. Maybe those people are poor, but not us. And it was just, it was staggering because to me they were objectively, unequivocally poor. But in their minds, they were not. And it wasn't that they were comparing and contrasting bank accounts or income. It was a felt sense experience in their lives that did not coincide with not having enough, which ultimately is what being poor means. You don't have enough. The other thing that was so so powerful was their answer to how are you was always, it's God's grace. Ganga ki krapa, Bhagwan ki krapa, Puja Swamiji ki krapa. And it it just, it amazed me. People sweeping the road. Bus, Ganga ki krapa. Women walking in the Himalayas with firewood on their heads. Back home to cook the one meal a day their family was going to eat. Bus, sab, bhagwan ki krapa. And it, It impacted me so deeply because the world I had come from was full of people who had everything. And yet there was always something that we felt like we didn't have. And it varied from moment to moment or person to person. But I had never met anyone who at pretty much any time in their life could say, ha, bas, must, trip togia. And here were people who had really next to nothing. And every moment, they were full. And so I really, I really started paying a lot of attention. I'm a scientist. And I started paying a lot of attention once I could see clearly again. And what I realized is that their, their source of happiness didn't come from external things. It wasn't about what they owned, what they bought, what they had. 
It was all about a connection to the divine. An inner happiness. An inner experience of being one with fullness. One with infinity. One with the divine. So how could you possibly lack in any way if you're one with the divine? It's like that, that story of the, the man who's looking for God, really wanting to find God, find God. And he roams here and roams there, roams everywhere, not finding God, and he's depressed and miserable. And he collapses on the shore of a river. And suddenly out of the river, this fish jumps up out of the water. And the fish starts flapping around in the air saying, water, water, water. I need water or I'm going to die. And the man says, you stupid fish. Like, you live in the water. You're surrounded by water. There's nothing but water. But now you've come out of the water. You're flapping around crying for water. Just go back in the water. And the fish says, same is true about you. You're crying for God. You're looking for God. You're roaming around for God. But you live in God. And God is in you. Stop focusing externally. Go back in, like you're telling me, go back in the water. So I'm telling you, go back in. So over the, over the last 25 years in this, this beautiful and really fun mix of science and spirituality that I get to, that I get to move through, I would say that the, the real source of happiness is a decision to be happy. Look, we all could be miserable. I am sure that if we went around this garden and I said, give me, give me the one thing that's not right in your life, the one thing that makes you upset, I guarantee you, every one of us will have that. It could be our height, our weight, our skin color. It could be our boss who never is satisfied no matter what we do. It could be our spouse or our parent who is never satisfied no matter what we do. It could be our neighbors. It could be the city we live in. It could be that the universe took a loved one from us recently or a long time ago, but we're still suffering from it. It could be anything. There's always an excuse, a reason to not be happy if we want. And as long as we've convinced ourselves that we can't be happy until all those reasons are over, we will never be happy. Happiness is not that which happens automatically when you have successfully removed every source of possible annoyance or dissatisfaction or sadness from your life. It's not a byproduct that just appears in the, in the space once you've satisfactorily gotten everything out of your way. Happiness is that which we choose. Every minute and every moment. Yeah, my weight might be wrong, my height might be wrong, my skin color might be wrong, people might be mad at me again. My job may not be how I'd like it to be, whatever. And, and I can be happy. It doesn't mean we're complacent. 
It doesn't mean that we have said, I'm not going to try to change anything. We've been given free will. We've been given agency. We've been given initiative, creativity to serve, to work, to change things. But we have to stop thinking that we will only be happy once we have changed things. I can be happy right now, long before the world dances according to my tune, long before everyone does what I want them to and treats me how I want them to, acts how I want them to. I can choose happiness. And I think that's the greatest key, is a really conscious decision. That I have the source of happiness, the source of love in me, And regardless of what is happening around me, I can choose to be happy in this moment. And that doesn't mean that I don't notice or see that there are things that I need to work to change. Hunger in the world, oppression in the world, poverty in the world, climate change. I mean, there's a lot of work to do. And in the face of all of that, I can be happy, not complacent, but happy. And that happiness, I think, if we're going to look at tools, I would give you three tools. The first is just this very conscious choice every day, in the morning. I choose happiness. So many of us move through our lives like we're victims. We wake up in the morning and it's like, oh God, the same situation. Like the universe did not come in overnight with a magic wand and suddenly fix everything that was wrong in my life. So we wake up with this, oh, this again. But instead, if we wake up with the awareness, I'm not a victim. I get to choose what this day is like. Not the weather. Not the traffic. Not the stock market. Not other people's moods. But I get to choose my experience in the world today. That is entirely up to me. And I am going to choose to have a beautiful, joyful, peaceful, love-filled day. So that would be daily tip one. And if you need to stick a note on your bathroom mirror or on your refrigerator, do it. Or on your mobile phone. We probably see them before we see the mirror or the refrigerator. And the second... And third are the two things I mentioned in the Ganga Arati. Gratitude. So many of us naturally think that the order is first that which I want to happen happens. Then naturally I'll be happy. And when I'm happy I'll be grateful. Right? I mean, I want you to do something for me. You do it. I feel happy then I say thank you, right? It seems like the natural progression of things. But it's actually backwards. And it's one of the reasons that so many of us aren't happy. We're waiting for that which we want to happen to happen so we can be happy and then grateful. But all of the science now, and there's been a lot of money, a lot of research, a lot of hours put into this. It's not, I'm happy, then I'm grateful. It's actually, I'm grateful, then I'm happy. Gratitude actually breeds happiness. 
Now, most people think, well, my God, if what I want to happen didn't happen, what is there to be grateful for? But you don't have to be happy or grateful about this exact moment of what didn't happen. Can you see out of your eyes? Can you see the sunrise? Can you see the sunset? Can you hear the voice of your loved ones? Can you hear beautiful music? Do you have water running out of a tap in your house? You turn on a tap and water comes out? Do you have food in the refrigerator, in a cupboard, in a store down the block that you have money to buy something from? Do you have someone in your bed, in your home, in the world who you love and who loves you? Do you have legs that carry you into the bathroom when you wake up? If you've got all of that, you are more blessed than the overwhelming vast majority of people in the world. Are you free? Are you free to worship God by any name, any form, in any way you would like? Are you free to love other people in whatever way, whichever people you would like? If so, you are more blessed than most people on this planet. So there's a lot to be grateful for. If we can start being more grateful, we'll find that we're happier. So people talk about gratitude journals, gratitude lists. Yeah, you know, they don't have to necessarily be on paper. I have a a gratitude practice in the morning. I don't get out of bed before I Think of five things that I'm grateful for. It's just a beautiful way to start the day. I don't write them down. I could, but I don't. Develop your own practice, however it works. But be grateful. And then the other is this aspect of what threw me rather than what for me. This service to others, because what we have found is altruism actually brings joy. And again, they've done all kinds of scientific studies, all kinds of research. You give people $20, $100, half of them you tell them to go out and to buy whatever they want, have whatever fun they want. The other half, you tell them to go out and use that money for someone else. The half that use that money for someone else are far and above happier when they come back than those who used that money on themselves. And it's just been proven over and over again in so many different ways, so many different laboratories. And it's so counterintuitive because we think the more I have, the happier I'll be. But the science proves the opposite. The more you give, the happier you'll be. So try it. Of course, you can always go back. It's not like, it's not like you can't, can't ever go back to your old ways. But give it a try. Give it a month. For a month. Wake up every day and before you get out of bed, think of five things you're grateful for. Before you go to sleep at night, think of five different things you're grateful for. See whether throughout the day you can just remember to be grateful. Before you eat, before you drink water, all day long. And see how much you can give, how much you can serve. If it doesn't work, you can always go back. But from what I've seen in my life and from what all of the science shows, it works. 
Our happiness is in our hands. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. OM Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. OM Times, co creating a more conscious lifestyle. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth Radio is conscious living for your soul. Every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Like Baldwin with People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. I grew up loving circuses and other traveling animal shows, but it never occurred to me what life might be like for the animals. Training wild animals to do things they don't understand takes force. Routine discipline with a hook or whip with the heel of a boot shows the animal exactly who's the boss. Don't patronize animal acts. Please contact People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. 757-622-PETA Welcome back. This is Sadvi Bhagavati Saraswati with inspiration and transformation. Our happiness is in our hands. And the best sutra for happiness is not to expect anything from someone else that if they don't do it, I become unhappy. To not hook my happiness into someone else's actions, someone else's words, someone else's choices. Because then I've taken the most precious thing, my joy, my freedom to be joyous. And I've hooked it into someone else's karmic drama. When they are acting the way I want them to, I'm happy. When they're not, I'm not. Dancing according to my tune, I'm happy. Not, I'm not. Well, it's a recipe for disaster. And a recipe for misery because we're all stuck in our karmic dramas. And while we would love to think that our greatest motivating factor is keeping everyone around us happy, Ultimately, most of our greatest motivating factor is our own karmic drama. And so, if in order to be happy, you need someone else to be a certain way, whether it's a loved one, whether it's an employer or an employee, whether it's God, right? I mean, whoever, whatever it may be that you are needing to give you something. Because for so many of us, the happiness we get from God isn't, oh, thank you for being in my life. But, oh, thank you so much for having my son pass that exam that he didn't study for. Thank you so much for having me be the one to get this or get that. So we need to unhook. Unhook our happiness. And it's very, very challenging. It's not, it's not easy. It's simple but not easy. Swahim se puchnai. Ki mera bitter ka jo happiness factory hai. Isko me kese on karu. Because each of us has that ability to turn on our own internal happiness machine. We know. We've all had experiences. 
of being all alone. No one is there. No input from the world. Days before social media or maybe your phone is off. Nonetheless, you're able to be happy. We don't need someone to say something or do something for us to feel happy. So many of us experience it in nature, in the forest with the trees on the banks of Ganga. Being with yourself, taking a walk, listening to music, meditating, doing yoga. We have so many experiences of happiness that don't require another another person. So it's it's beautiful to be in relationship, to make others happy, to have others make you happy, wonderful. But just make sure that when they're not acting according to what you want, that your happiness doesn't disappear. Because otherwise you are forever at the mercy of someone else's drama. So the way to stay happy is internally. That whatever's going on outside, most of us apani swastiti jo hai, paristiti kisab se hai. Jase paristiti hai, vase apani swastiti hai. Ye galat baat hai. Paristiti chaos mein, to fir hum chaos mein. Paristiti shant hai, that's the dilemma. Most of us, I was saying, our internal world is based on what's happening in the outer world. There's chaos in the outer world. We are chaotic inside. Peace and happiness in the outer world. We are peaceful and happy inside. But that's not how it should go. We should have access to joy and peace inside. Because that's the nature of who we are. The nature of the soul, of the spirit, of the divine inside of us. Is peaceful, is joyful, is love. And we just have to access that. So that we have that, that freedom. And that's the only, the only real sutra for happiness because otherwise, as the rest of the world keeps changing, so does our mood keep changing. So the, the less we hook our mood into the outer world, the happier we are. Then wherever you go, you can be happy. It's a beautiful day. People are doing what you want. Wonderful. It's not a beautiful day. It's a rainy day or a snowy day or something that you don't think is beautiful. And no one is doing what you want them to do. Still, you can be happy. Because that source of happiness is in you. But for that, we need to also have a connection to that source. That's why we meditate. To connect with that source. This brings to a close this hour of inspiration and transformation. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad to be together with you all each week. And I look forward to being together again next Thursday, same time, on Ohm Times Radio. Mm-hmm.